Hello, my name is David Cole and I'm Technical Director for Sunfield Penstock Solutions and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Environment Agency. So the Environment Agency is, the, is England's uh, regulator for um, the environment. So other parts of the United Kingdom will be covered by the National Resource Wales um, and you've got SEPA in Scotland uh, and Northern Ireland obviously comes under the uh, EA. So this is an interesting subject because I've, I've sort of worked with the Environment Agency as in I've had ideas and I've took them to the Environment Agency over many years saying is this a good idea for pollution containment and probably baffled them a few times with some of my comments. Um, but the EA really had a major structural change back in 2015 when it was pushed from, um, from financing really from the government away from being a guidance driven uh, regulator to more purely now as a regulator working a very similar way to the HSE. So back in the uh, in the noughties and that we had PPGs, Pollution Prevention Guidelines, which lots and lots of businesses used. These now have been archived and this is a major step because this means that the Environment Agency no longer really supports any documents as such that companies can use to say we've covered this, we've done this, we followed what you said. It's kind of a difficult subject because in my point of view is when the regulator gives out the pollution prevention guidelines, technology moved along, but the guidelines didn't. And if the guidelines don't move along with technology, it means that companies stick to very old systems. So what you've got really is now is the regulator has one job and that's to protect the environment and make sure that we've all got a, a country to live in that's safe. So the Environment Agency really is there to protect the environment and that's what they'll do. They have no other real issues really. They look at, we, we know the Environment Agency when it comes to flooding, so they're there trying to protect those environmental impacts that flooding has. They're not just looking at purely looking at fish and protecting the fish, they're actually looking at, at us as human beings and making sure that the environment that we live in is safe. So their role really is making sure that the, 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 the world or, or specifically the country that we live in is meeting certain regulations that keep us safe. So the Environment Agency isn't there to give you guidance and tell you how to run your business, how you can make better improvements so that you don't uh, fall foul of the law. They're there purely to make sure that you've got one task and that is to protect the environment. And they're going to make sure that you do that and you work your business within our laws. So really the Environment Agency doesn't really care about your day-to-day -day running of the business, the problems that you may have with trading and the fact that you can't afford to implement some sort of environmental sort of system that protects the environment because your costs or your sales have gone down. They have one role and that is to make sure that if you're a business that's producing something that can pollute and harm the environment and harm public health, that you don't do that. So what they're there for is, is if you fail, so if you cause a pollution incident and something goes wrong, it's too late really, the environment's been damaged then, but they have a duty to make sure that that is protected, that any damage was done is repaired, probably by you, to make sure really that you learn from your mistakes and it doesn't happen again. So the Environment Agency has got lots and lots of different powers. They've got things like the civil sanctions, they've got the environmental sensing guidelines that they use, they've got all sorts of things. They can actually stop your business trading. So if you're actually trading and they see that you're actually working unsafe and you're putting the environment at risk, they can remove your operating permit, they can close you down. So a really important, they're, they're exactly the same really as the HSE. They've got the same sort of powers. They're going to cost you when they turn up. But really, if you listen to what they're asking for, which is, they want you to run your business how you want to run your business. Just one thing is don't impact the environment and don't impact the public's health or animals' health. That's what they're there for. They're there really to protect and to make sure that we've got a sustainable business. So I think there's been a lot of um, focus with the Environment Agency recently on, on a guidance, Sirius 736. It's quite interesting because this is evolved from, from the Bunsfield fire in 2005, which I was involved with, and you will we'll see several of my case studies within that document. Now why they're interested is because what, one of the biggest problems we've got is businesses have disasters, so they have a fire, they have a major pollution event, and anything that then enters the water stream is causing a pollution incident. So they're very focused on this guidance. 
And the way they got around this really was that they actually funded the guidance. So they funded the team and they funded this guidance and they made it free. So this is a construction industry research association guidance, normally used by many civil engineers all around the world and builders. They made this document, unlike many others where you had to pay for it, so it's restricted, they made it free. And they made it that it was a usable document, so it's there for all. So it's not there purely for people designing sites. It's there for site operators, people who run small businesses, so they can look at it, they can understand it, and they can actually make an impact and make their business environmentally friendly. So when you have a pollution event, um, and it's a release into what we call controlled water, so you might have killed some fish or you've caused an impact off your site now. The, the chances are the environment agency may come to site, they may start to create an investigation. That's very similar to if you've had an, an accident at work and the HSE have to get involved. It's almost identical. They will make a decision, they will look at your processes, they will look at your maintenance records, they will look how your environmental management system was developed, if you've got one, or how your attitude to the environment, what you can show that you've, you've looked at and how you've tried to protect it. They will look at all those things and make a decision that maybe they might prosecute. Their aim is really is to neutralise the fault that's happened. But if they feel that what's done with there's some element of blame there, in other words, there's, there's a deliberate act or somebody has been negligent in what they've done, just like any, any criminal, criminal case, because pollution is a crime, they have a duty to make sure that they punish or action punishment through the courts. So one of the key areas at the moment is the environment agency seem to be bringing up this Syria 736 water pollution containment design, fire water containment. So if you're getting asked about Syria 736, I think you should look, talk to us and speak to us about our six point checklist. Understand regulation. Understand how regulation impacts your business. Complete a full risk assessment so you understand what your risk really is. Carry out a design so you've actually got a design that will work. Implement that design. Monitor, maintain, and then document the system that you've installed and make sure you keep it up to date. And if you need to improve it because guidance changed, move it along. If you need to contact us, why don't you go to www.penstocksolutions.co.uk.